You are very welcome back. Um, a friendly reminder, Braeburn Coffee is the official coffee partner of OTB. Every week we're giving one lucky OTB fan a €100 Euro voucher to spend on some Braeburn Coffee goodness at an Apple Green store near you. To enter, just check out at Off The Ball on Twitter. Like and retweet our Braeburn competition post and you'll be in the draw. Braeburn Coffee is Apple Green's new premium coffee brand that offers customers the best coffee experience on the road. It's available now at 30 locations nationwide. Johnny's still with us. Uh, it was nearly nearly the greatest week ever in Irish football in Europe for League of Ireland clubs. If Rovers had managed to like Yeah. Get that back, go into extra time, win on penalties, whatever. But then Slagger like Rovers like completely dominate Motherwell and win two nil. Pats go through on penalties. This is a clear sign of progress, I think. We've been waiting for clear signs of progress. Summer football is gonna be to our advantage. And yeah, Sligo beat Motherwell, knocked them out, three nil in aggregate. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think this is much different to last year in that Bowes Bowes reached the same stage uh, and Dundalk played, you know, Vita Sarnham and really possibly could have knocked them out. And Dundalk were far from the team they were last year and Bowes were sort of going okay in the league. Same with Sligo and Pats, like Sligo and Pats have been basically miles off Shamrock Rovers this this year, yet they've progressed in the conference league and the conference league has offered Great opportunity for Irish teams. Like the Shamrock Rovers thing for me, Shamrock Rovers are not at the level of playing in the Champions League group stages. They're not. And they were second best to Luda Goretz. They, sh- they pushed them very hard. But Rovers will be kicking themselves if they don't get into the Conference League now. Yeah, the one thing you'd say about that, to to like slightly play devil's advocate, some of their best players are injured and some of their best players have just been transferred. Rovers. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's, there will be a season where they have a fit squad and don't lose anybody and mm. might be able to compete at this level yeah and like. th- it's building like w- Irish football came from a low base um, where you know you never qualified for group stages um, but I think we've we've performed well in Europe and I was extremely proud last night you know I I, I had to pay uh, was it 21 quid to watch the three teams on the streams because none of the games were on TV none of the games was on TV which I thought was disappointing because you know these are the games people want to watch um, but I was very very proud and the, the Sligo Sligo to be rocking the way it was and Shane Blaney's goal a uh, guy from Donegal um, who you know has had his time in Britain and the Pats team made up of players that basically Tim Clancy is kind of half thrown together this season 29 degree heat in Slovenia against a good side and did did the job in extra time um, sorry on penalties but it was a great great result they got to play Sofia next um, Sligo play Viking and now the d- debate is whether Sligo can show the can have the game in the showgrounds because they don't quite have the capacity for it. Right. So there are the issues. Dan... Yeah, but, and there is a plan in place to fix that for the future. Like, mm. you, you can see they're building on that, that there's an, there's a, an on-field and an off-field correlation. Yeah, and uh, Sligo Rovers is, is, a, is, a, is a fan-owned club in a small town in the west of Ireland, and it's a proper football town, and they've built something really big there, 850 grand for getting through. And Sham- I thought Shamrock Rovers' performance Tuesday night was brilliant, Ger, and I think it's if you're a League of Ireland fan, you can be very proud of what the league is achieving. Dan McDonald was saying in his in his newsletter today, I think it was, it was quite a sobering thought. He was like... A Motherwell uh, or a Scottish journalist came into the showgrounds and was basically given out at the facilities and all that and uh, Dan's line was that if you're a journalist at League of Ireland ground it's odds against that you have Wi-Fi and somewhere to plug in your laptop and that's actually true that's where we're at where facilities are miles off we're still a long way off but I think in terms of the young players coming through and we the quality of the football we beat Motherwell Sligo Rose beat Motherwell 3-0 and thoroughly deserved it we had Daniel Lambert in studio on OTB AM during the week talking about his idea for the clubs to come together and try and get rid of or at least agree a higher price for the buyout clauses that he's seeing our best young talent go for pennies on the dollar you mm. would say and it was his belief that he could get the clubs to work together that's what's needed the clubs need to be a unified lobbying force to lobby government for all sorts of different things to improve press facilities first off which will improve press coverage to improve toilet facilities for uh, patrons to decide that we're going to invest in our football industry and we're going to have a centre of excellence in Connacht that serves Galway and Sligo maybe or mm. so, something whatever it is that there will be money given to football and then it will be spent properly and invested as opposed to on the inflationary issue of players wages which um, you know is going to attract better players but actually what we need is a massive uh, improvement in facilities and then Daily Mount the news comes out actually after he was in the studio um, and I, I don't know how they feel about it because we didn't get to talk to them about it. Like, Good in general, I think. I'd say they're frustrated that it's still 
down yeah. the line. But the the new plan, the proposal B, which will actually be standing for a slightly higher capacity, could make it a, a more exciting venue. You just want to make sure that it becomes the community facility that the community of Fillsborough deserves. Yeah, and um, I, I, ju- I just find it strange in Ireland that, I mean... I paid five euro for a coffee the other day. Like everything is so expensive. Yeah, we can't. We've no. Our facilities are terrible in general in this country. Like it's not only football. It's like, what are our general um, rugby facilities like? Bar, Lansdown Road, and Tolman. What are like? Are, have we really good Gaelic games facilities in this country? Like, is Pierce yeah. Stadium a modern ground? Well, no, it isn't. Well, we've got we've got loads of modern Gaelic football grounds. That are, are they modern though? Well, you, you travel around the world and you're like, actually, Gaelic grounds. Uh, Gaelic grounds, Creeve. but the Gaelic grounds, that's not, like, that's not, like, we don't have modern f- facilities in this country, like, they're all, a lot of them don't have covered areas, a lot of them, like, as Dan was on with the Wi-Fi, a lot of it is antiquated, in the League of Ireland it's no different, but, like, we, we seem to think this is okay on the government level, I think the government needs to look at what happened, um, roughly since Michael O'Neill got Rovers to Europe and since Stephen Kenny got done talk to the Europa League group stages this was all achieved with no real FAI um, prize money we're talking about and very little government support and I think football has suffered in that it wasn't sexy as a politician to be friendly with the League of Ireland and I think it is more so now but like we shouldn't have people leaving this country on a plane every Saturday uh, to watch England when they, they should have a product here that they should be proud of. And our players are now staying until they're 18. I think, I think you can't give out to people going to watch No, no, I can't. No, no, no. And I do it myself. But like, yeah. we should have a product that people watch, should be watch. able to watch yeah. here. And, 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 and we should have... Our young players are staying in this country now because of Brexit. And we need to offer them something. I, like, I was... This is mad. Like, I was out cycling with a guy the other day and he was telling me... I went to... He went to Nottingham Forest when he was 12. And he came back from England when he was 18. And he was just like, he was just too, I was like, you went when you were 12. And we thought this was normal. Like, we just exported our kids. Now we can't do that. And I think we have to offer them something. And what I would implore the government to do is put money behind academies. And that's, th- th- that money's not going to be wasted on wages. Because I think you can, like, kind of lastly on this year, I think you can see what the football people in this country, men and women, are doing. We have a lot of young coaches now. And what they achieved last night should not be sniffed at. It's actually a very, very good achievement. And people are beginning to respect the League of Ireland across Europe, I feel now. Yeah, well, they're starting to get great players at still knockdown prices, and that was the point. So. It's, it is complex, so it Jerry. Is it's, not, it's not straightforward because well, agents will look after players, players want to look after themselves, and a lot has been made of players going over to the League One. But League One is a lot bigger than League, League of Ireland. Oh, it, totally. Yeah. You know, and it, it will be for a long, long time. Well, and and maybe it's not a bad target. Like, no, not at all. So you, you create the same amount of revenue as they're doing at some level mm. uh, somewhere else around Europe and you go, well, that's our target for that and they're the facilities that they have so we should have similar facilities and that's a benchmark. I, whatever, I whatever to, the, wherever no, the benchmark comes from, right? mm. it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be from, uh, from England. But... Like, Iceland would be the benchmark for me in some respects. I've been to Iceland at a, at a ground when F. Howe were playing Dundalk and like the facilities were... So modern compared to what we have here. And this is like a, a team in Reykjavik of a population of 300,000 or something. And they were punching way above their weight. Um, just they seem to be investing their money better. Like, obviously, the FAI is still in massive debt, but we have a long way to go. We do. So we Obvious, out, I'm, I'm, we're very happy. to Greatest week of all time. It, oh, disaster. Long yeah, way but go. you have right. to kind of not rest in your laurels. Because oh, no, we've had a lot of... I, I would hope, um, sincerely hope that one of the teams gets into the group stage and extends this on and I hope to see the games more on TV then because... Ideally all three this, make it. Like that's yeah, the, that's it's, the, it's, be, it's definitely possible too. Like it's unlikely but it's possible. All right. Johnny, good stuff. Thanks very much. Thanks, sure. That's your lot this hour. Stay with us. Uh, if you want to get in touch, 53106, the text number. You can get us on Twitter, at Off The Ball and make sure you follow us on our social channel. Subscribe, youtube.com forward slash Off The Ball and uh, our podcast. Well, they're flying. You can get them on the OTV Sports app. Stay tuned. Football on Off The Ball. With Sky, the championship is back. Watch Middlesbrough versus West Brom this Saturday live only on Sky Sports.